Hi, welcome back to Future Fast. And once again, we have Raj Kapoor. And once again, for some of you, uh, I keep following that habit that you guys come only for these future Friday conversations that we have. And uh, uh, believe me, you will really find it very interesting if you can catch up with the other two parts of the conversation, uh, particularly with Raj. Uh, in the first, he shares his journey. And in the second, we talk about a lot about IBA and what IBA is doing. And uh, you will find it interesting, uh, definitely. And if you are in blockchain, you must listen to that part of the conversation. So please do go and catch up on that. And uh, and thanks for uh, supporting uh, because most of our audience and listeners actually enjoy this part of the conversation. Uh, yes. So wonderful once again. Raj, thank you so much once again for being part yeah. of this. So uh, Raj, uh, uh, I, I start in very much. But first, I want to ask: uh, Is the future? How do you see the future of Raj Kapoor and future of IBA? Are they connected? Well, they are, are they same? I, it's like you know, in the beginning, Bitcoin was blockchain, and blockchain was Bitcoin. I see the future. I see still. You know, a lot of people think I, I, I am IBA and I am Raj Kapoor. A lot of people don't even know the rest of my team sometimes. But we have a great team. So I see over a period of time, the one person who is known as an IBA as, or as Raj is now many, there are multiple Raj Kapoor's now. I call them all because every, there, there was one guy who told me, he's, he's about 60 years old and he's telling me, you know, if my, you know, my one thing is, Mami, main bada ho ke Raj Kapoor banna chata he told me that. <laughs> he was telling me so he, and that was, the, that was, I think, one of the biggest compliments I could get because there's somebody so. Somebody says, sir, uh, you are the Shah Rukh Khan of uh, blockchain. I enjoy that. I'm not saying I, uh, I'm, I but it, does, it doesn't change the way I do things. I believe that all of us, my job is as Raj Kapoor to enable the rest of my teams. So we've got people from the age of 30, as young as 30, to as old as 60 odd. I mean, I'm one of the oldest guys. Me, myself, and my CEO, Makarish, his name is, we are probably the oldest guys around. But between the other, a lot of them, we've got more than 500 years of experience all in IB, all in different domains. So there are multiple Raj Kapoor's. It's just like we have scattered ourselves uh, in multiple places because they all believe in the way I work and which has been another, it's like, a, it's, that's a tribute to me, I feel. That's, that's a tribute from their side to me. It's an honor for me to receive such love and affection and more important, the loyalty over the years. So now they've got all over and they represent me the way I would be doing that. I don't feel that there was a time when I said, will it be enough? If I'm not there, somebody else can do it. Today I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed because the rest of the team has now made themselves at a state. But they can go and represent IBA. I never have to think twice. So IBA is now in multiple places, in 13 countries besides us. And those guys have approached us to open the India chapter or their country chapter there which has been the biggest tribute you can give it to an organization or to an individual. I still think the organization is bigger than an individual. At some point of time, I'll take the back seat, maybe five years, 10 years down the line. I don't know. I don't see the seat behind me right now, but maybe sometime. But at the same time, there will be a new generation which will take it forward. And a lot of passionate individuals because I started it with passion and nothing else. And I think all of them have joined us with the same passion. And by the way, we even have uh, international uh, people who's living in Bangalore, by the way. In Bangalore, the lady who takes care of my Bangalore ch chapter, she's a foreigner. She's a Spanish lady. So uh, you are introduced to her anyway. Maybe you can talk to her as well uh, sometimes. Sure thing. Well, uh, so what do you see the future to be, Raj? What's your perspective on future? If you look at, if I give, look, look into my gazing, I, I pull into the ball and say, the gazing ball and say, listen, I see a future, I personally, just my, my thoughts again, uh, I see India getting to be on pole, in pole position in blockchain and AI. Now, why AI? It's been there since Rocky's here, last 60 years. But it's, India and AI, because I think in, I'll tell in you AI, which part India of, is way behind, right? No, no, I'll tell you which part of AI. Not okay. everything. AI, we, are, we may be behind. But they're catching up a lot, doing a lot of work. Recently, there is a in a, there is a form there's an agent there's an in a, in a, in a whole uh, let's say a, a body formed in India called the Global Alliance in Ethical AI and Innovation. India is it's been chosen to actually 
work around the standards, around the responsible AI. I'm not saying AI overall. That's huge, huge space. And we are really far behind in that, yes. But when we talk about putting a framework, we are now coming at the forefront of that. There is a lot of people we are in talks with, with Meta, et cetera, all the big boys. And on 17th of March this year, 2024, it was blessed by the government of India and if on an unofficial function. And I am the chair, they made me the chairperson of that, chairman of that, which a lot of people don't know because they know me for blockchain, but they don't know me as much for AI. So I, while AI, yeah, because AI, ethics, sustainability, or ethics and sustainability, responsibility all goes hand in hand, but whichever technology we talk about. So I see a resurgence in India when this happens and the standards are, we have to set the, uh, you know, in uh, the, the Dr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, the minister, has asked for a certain set, set of standards come, come August. And that's where we are now working towards that. So at least we might become one of the earlier adopters of our standards in AI and not yet in blockchains yet. But that's a good move. And I think India can take a good move. Whatever the reasons could be political or otherwise, but a move is good to have standards around sustainable and ethical AI. That's where we could be one of the forefront at the forefront right now. That's my opinion. Somebody else might come and do something better. Okay. So, good thing is India is looking up in technologies. I want the shift from India to become a service economy to a product economy in this space. Or we want a paradigm shift. We don't want to be the back office of the world. Not for long. We will be for a long time. I'm not saying it's anything wrong. It gives us revenues. It makes us, you know, it gives us everything else. But I want India to be the one which has the patents. India to be the one which says, this is our product. And Amazon is not mine. The clip card is not mine. It's nothing is ours. We would like to say, literally, when you talk about Atman in India or made in India, you should actually make that. And we have got the talent. We don't we harness it. So the future is all about harnessing the talent which has now grown and now also has a vision beyond doing service. I see us as somebody who can do that. And I think, uh, personally, I, I hold about 67 patents in blockchain, personally, on a personal basis, uh, and about uh, almost 100 odd in AI, uh, for that matter. Wow. So if I said I found an individual, I can do it, why can we not galvanize the nation? To do it? Why can't we do it at the grassroots level? Let's start from the colleges and schools. Let's bring it from there and take it up into, a, into, a, into the space where we can actually do it. I'm trying to create this by doing a lot of initiatives. Uh, the Web3 Village is an initiative, which is going to different, different places, Uttarakhand, Goa, Bombay. Oh, mm -hmm. that's, that's a big one, Bombay. It's a big win for us. That's where a lot of things are going to happen. We're trying to make, and each of these, the idea is to create products made in India, by India, and patented by India. That's where we will get valuations. When people talk about valuations, guys, valuations come and you really start creating everything from scratch. We're going to be doing that. So I see a future where we make the most powerful India and not a service class, service India. Sorry, I am not in favor of only services. Yes, good for now, but not always for the future. I want to see before, the, in the future and future fast, as I would say, a more resurgent India, a more confident India. We could not become the manufacturing hub, but we can definitely do that. And the same thing in the technology space, guys. We can and we will. That's my wonderful set. So, uh, Raj, if uh, you have to make predictions, what would you choose to predict on? Prediction on what? I have many predictions. I have prediction that I'll become a grandfather. I have a grandfather and I want to become another grandfather. But what predictions do you want me to make? Tech predictions? Or what? Yep. Life predictions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in, a, uh, in technology, in, uh, in technology, uh, lifestyle. I, yeah. Okay. Okay. Lifestyle, everything. Okay. I'll tell you. We need to really be a leader rather than a follower. That is my prediction. I want India to become a leader within this. We are not going to be followers. The prediction is leadership. Leadership will come to our nation. It is not going to be followers in a few years from time to now. I see that happening. I see the hunger in the youth. I see people trying to work. Yeah, this is about the India from a political sense, right? Globally. I see it from a, I'm talking from a technical perspective. Okay. Politically, 
politically fine wherever we go i am seeing no i gave no political protection because i have from, from the age when i saw the rights till now i am uh, politicians are all great to have where, where they are doing their roles not for me i have with clearly we politically we are doing of course whatever we have to do we have reached a certain position and we are seen globally everybody looks at india as a global uh, superpower in its own way we should translate translate that into a reality with a very core of sustainability we don't have that if you look at the plastic problem for example we got a whole bunch of plastic we don't know what the hell to do with the plastic okay we segregate so we segregate our garbage nobody knows what happens after that we don't know a lot of things we must really walk our talk of sustainability now we can become net zero faster than most other countries we want to have i i see india also being the first country to become net zero i also see that if we actually do and practice what we preach uh, well mm -hmm. first is a little far call right because government of india's target itself is uh, 2075 i am trying to make it 2050 i'm not and i'm not bragging i have a master plan in place when in goa you sit down and you do a lot more ideation because you have a beautiful view in front of you you see right in front of me i can see miles of fields and palm trees and beautiful hills it's a beautiful and i'm in panjim i'm not even in the in the suburbs okay so i see that i'm using goa as the first place to make it net zero and then replicate that same idea in every state with their different challenges so i've made a master plan So when I say that, I say it with a with something backing me. I don't say it just to say, "Oh, wow, it's going to be the future." I probably won't be there in twenty fifty anyway. Well, who knows? I might live till that time. We never know. But anyway, if I don't, whoever's there listening and probably about three four decades younger than me would definitely remember these words. Raj Kapoor said that, and Raj Kapoor will make that happen. Not because of pride, because I really it's my passion to make it happen. I don't want to see an India which just talks but does not action. Does not his what my concept is. What next? After the dialogue, after the we have said something, I take on from what next, and I think all of us align with each other and do what next. The what next? What happens after I say we'll be net, we'll be pollution free by so and so date or whatever? What next? What are you doing about it? It's easy to make a statement. How do you back it up? so i have made a backup plan for the nation for a state and i'm doing it for every state across india i'm doing it understanding the challenges understanding where the where we can actually do and leverage what we can from each state we can have a complete exchange state by state first start off with that's my my, my prediction i am probably doing i'll make it anyways I'll, i'm already working on it that's my personal mission right now and when we talk about esg another term totally used abused misused seldom used that's the space which i want corporates to say list guys wake up and smell the coffee greenwashing is passing i'm bringing in the technology guys let's use technology to make things better for example we made a complete very simple thing called the tree chain where we actually can monitor each and every tree which has been planted or so called planted how do you know it's planted you people say oh i planted 50 trees in your name How the hell do I know? I have no idea where those trees are. Are they growing, or are this you are selling and reselling the same tree tree spot to everybody else around the earth? I don't know. So we are putting some systems in place. We are putting just. Can I take this call, please? Watch just one minute. Sure, sure. Hello. Talking about the future, India will be a faster one of the fastest to reach the net at the zero, which we have said yes, but we will be even faster than that. That's a promise I make. and i make very few promises that i can't keep so i'm making that promise but i i need everybody along with me everybody who's listening in there got to support you got to support each other guys so and everybody can contribute for example we made a small app very small thing we've already started this is not happened in india because in india it takes a little time for people to become citizen scientists or responsible citizens a little it takes but the young youth oh they are really good they are really kicked about this idea a lot of my college guys in euro university where i teach they do that now, there's a there's a there's a website you can see also it's called sea dot earth s e a our oceans are getting choked we'll fishing. share the link in the podcast so right below yes. you can look it up yeah so where are they oceans are getting choked because of overfishing lot of affluence going inside plastics corals eroding 
they have a life left about 12 to 15 years. That's scary. And if the youth are listening, you should be scared. If the oceans die, you and I will not survive either. 70% of the world is oceans. Now, what are we doing? We, you know, what happened? Why are they dying? Because we don't have good data to predict natural disasters and prevent all these things. Now, we have now created a small app to start off with, which all you need is to switch on your mobile phone, download and switch it on. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't take any money from you. It doesn't take anything. But it captures all the environmental data around you, locks in on the blockchain, and then uses that data for modeling and making future fast predictions on weather and climate change. If we had had this app maybe 20 years back, we wouldn't have glacier melting. But we didn't have it. Now we have it. So now we can become a good citizen. Uh, it, in fact, it is now called the largest citizen scientist project. Now that's a very big thing within this space. This is the largest means largest. And all of you can take part in it. It doesn't cost you anything, but it can actually be a very big thing for the globe. For the world. So maybe you can just download the app and use it if you want to be a citizen scientist. Go ahead. It doesn't cost you nothing. Now that, like that, we're doing a lot of things for recycling, for biodiversity, for, for forestry, forestry, deforestation. We are doing for wildlife. Wildlife, we're using block three and uh, blockchain and web three technologies for wildlife conservation. We're using that even for air pollution. Yeah, I've just submitted a paper two days back on air pollution. I've done for using to make smart cities smarter using that. To you know, doing things which actually make an impact for the for the world we live in. If we don't have a world, we are now. If there is as everybody says, there is no planet B. There is no planet B. Then, but do you have a plan B for it? You don't have a plan B. Also, forget the planet. There's no plan B. There's no plan A. Let's make that plan. Let's. When India, we say everybody. There's a lot of population, so a lot of people can actually get together and do a lot of things. Once, what is looked upon as a disadvantage can become our advantage. And today, we are a young nation. But 20 years from now, we won't be a young nation. We will be an aging nation like the others are now. This will not have, this will not remain all the time. But this is the time when we can actually do the next two decades and the future of our future, human, human, the future of humans, animals, bio, the around the biodiversity around us is all in our hands. We have started a small thing. We're making it bigger. Bring in together, get your thoughts together. I'd love to hear your suggestions on what you think are problems. And I learned this from my wife. Right? She says, does your, do your, does your blockchain AI remove the garbage from the roads which these tourists throw in Goa, for example? It's a small thing. I said, yeah, yeah it's part of the thing. It doesn't do it here. Yeah. But there are ways of doing it. There are ways. It, it, there is no silver bullet. But there are ways of doing it. There are ways of making it more accountable, etc. That's where it all started about two years back. Two, two and a half years back. My focus became on sustainability then. And I don't abuse or use. We are part of a consortium called Tech Zero. Tech Zero is a great thing. We're doing a lot of work. It was doing a lot of work in UK. Now I said I'll do it in India for you. We are doing it for doing it in the United Nations. And we are, we'll be very happy to know that four or five of our projects have been adopted by United Nations to be implemented in different continents to make these things happen. Uh, one of them is recycling of uh, paper, uh, sorry, plastic, uh, amongst other things, which I really like. Recycle to Earn is another great project. So there are so many now, but... The future is all going to be if you and I are going to be aligned, whether you're 30, you're 20 today and I'm 60 odd, that's make a difference. This is where your mind sets. This is where you should really think from. Think from your heart and your mind. No technology can replace that, guys. Well, I'm, I'm sure they've already got that much that if you were not to give away your age, they won't guess that for sure. But the, okay. the energy and the passion is anyway, uh, that, that's so, also part of your... Yeah, I guess, so. I guess so. So I always, so we always forget the age part of it. I always tell everybody I'm 25 and 35 years experience, 36 years experience, 37 years experience. That part changes. 25 remains constant. I'm not going older, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh, your prediction on how people, you said uh, you want to make a prediction on lifestyle as well? Lifestyle. I see a lot of people thinking more of health and mental health now. One thing off ignored in the past, by even brushing it the pagale, it's not that. I see a lot of people, and I'm doing a lot of work again in this space of bringing in all these, bringing in technology to actually do a lot of work. AI. But the bottom line is I see a lot of people recalibrating the way they think and they approach people. I think empathy 
is going to replace sympathy. We don't need sympathy. We need empathy. To align with people and the mindsets. Today, with such a lot of stressful lives. We all have stressful lives. Well, actually, I don't. But I, I, I prefer to think I don't. I'm very relaxed most of the time. When I do, I have to, when there's too much stress, I go to sleep. And I get up to de-stressed. My mantra. Now, but a lot of startups all have to succeed, want to succeed, funding, markets, blah, blah, a lot of things. Studies, jobs, careers, everything is stressful. Guys, it's not stressful. It's a part of your journey. If it is not, why don't you just become a saint? You know, even earn a lot of money. You'll have to excuse me a minute that Pell has come and I'm going to open, I, I'm going to open the door. Sure, right? just, sure. okay. yeah. All right. So as I was saying, while we talk about tech and growth in tech, start growing empathy. Start understanding people. Just don't just, your burnout will be too fast otherwise. I always uh, also think, think, you know, that even from a corporate perspective, I, I urge top management to start looking at, you know, as, as their people, and they're looking into their mindsets rather than looking at just numbers. We chase numbers. We don't chase our employees' efficiency and good with goodness. We don't do that. We have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we even look at our employees. The best employees don't leave, you know, they don't, they leave people. They don't need the company. They leave the people. It's toxic environments. Some of them are really bad. I was just reading about a guy who's, you know, the day he left his company, he had a big hole and all outside. And his employer, the video came on the employer, the music room upstairs. He's just enjoying himself. That's the way you should be. Just anything toxic, leave it. Toxicity is no place in, in, in the future for us. And the future fast, and you say, I like the topic because future fast is this. The future is coming really fast on us. It's We don't have the time now to sit down and say, no, we can't. We, don't. we should be doing it now. Because now is where the future is. Every second after this is the future. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raj. And uh, uh, I urge the listeners and audience to look up the links below, to follow and do reach out. He, he, uh, I, I, uh, I can confirm from my personal experience, he responds very fast. And uh, follow, follow the kind of work. And uh, it, it's uh, and also see wherever you can personally volunteer with the kind of projects. Uh, 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 see, uh, everything is big and atrocious, but unless we want to collaborate with it, won't become the first. So, so be part of the big. Be part of the story. Not be, yeah. don't be mystery. Be part of the story. Right. Yeah. And I wish you all the very best, uh, Raj. This is uh, uh, this is. Uh, something obviously I'm looking forward to. This is really nice, and we should uh, uh, we should take it up. And I hope most uh, people, most from our audience and yes. listeners, will also join. You, you. I'm, I'm going to catch you in Bangalore. I'm coming soon there for the opening of the Bangalore chapter, and I'll meet you there in person as well, and then introduce you to a whole new world as well. Looking forward to it. Thank you once again. All right. All right then. Take care for now. As they say, hasta la vista. Till we meet again. <laughs>